your grandmother was a person who lived every day for what a Kaddish Baruch Hu wanted from her. Everything always was about responsibility. She was always davening. She was always preparing for Yom Tavim, always doing mitzvahs. My grandmother searched for the truth, for what's MS and what's right. And it wasn't a fight. It wasn't, it wasn't hard. Whatever the right thing is, that's what we're going to do. She was uh, from Erlacha Tzedekas. That's what she represented. The Torah took away. That was the only way. The Torah says you got to do this. This is the way it has to be. There's no two questions. Just You can't even think of another way. She was able to be strong-minded and stick up for what's right and doing the right thing while being down to earth and gentle. Bobby was always smiley, always happy. Whenever you would walk into the house, when she'd see you, she'd give you a big smile. I'm the best a kid. Every kid who has our best a kid. My mother was busy taking care of people day and night. She was one of the wisest people you ever met. And everyone in the family would call her for Aitzis. Not only Aitzis, but a shoulder to cry on. Whether it was emotionally, whether it was financially, whether it was physically, their pain was her pain. And whatever she could do to mitigate it, she did. And there were no roadblocks. She just did it. I didn't even know how many people were helped through her. But I keep hearing how many people, this one and that one tells me that she helped her, them with this or with that, the money, ideas, everything. That was my mother-in-law. When you were with her, she made you feel like you were the most important person in the world. She was able to relate to anyone, while at the same time showing us and teaching us how to act. She was an unbelievable example for all all of our children and for the extended family and anyone who met her. She was just an amazing, an amazing person. Bobby definitely instilled within us what it is to be a Yid. She was always happy. She was always telling me, she says, Shvert is a Yid, Abra says Vert. It's hard to be a Yid, but it's worth it. Mike and Layla, as well as my parents, have kept my grandmother's legacy going and have always tried to emulate her ways, her and my grandfather both, in the way that they just doing things because it was the right thing to do, not because they'll be getting any credit for it or without any, you know, with any fanfare. And they've instilled that in us and the next generation as well. My uncle Moshe, he's always on his feet. He's always running around. If there is a simcha anywhere, whether it's family, a friend, close, not so close, my uncle is there. He doesn't feel like he's being matriarch himself. He's such a responsible Erlacher from learning, davening person. My parents have been our role models since I'm a little kid. They've been involved in chesed, both with their time, efforts, just people that we really we want to emulate them because they do things the right way. Mike and Leila, it's well known how involved they are in the local shuls and hospitals and trying to help everyone in any way possible. My mother's been involved in organizations since as far back as I can remember, whether it be Shaduchim uh, with older singles, helping out in, in the hospital with, where there's a need. My mother got involved. My father was always involved with Rabbanim, the Rav, and developing a kasher with them. And as of late, he's been helping out in, in, in different shuls and, and halls. Their love and devotion to their children is always seen and felt, and they're every good cave and kite. It's just something to be learned from. He's just a very special person. Erlach, good, good-hearted, fine, good husband. Hashem should help that we should all just continue great success. My wife and I would like to take this opportunity to thank my parents, to thank my aunt and uncle for everything they've done for us and for the school, and they should have the strength to continue doing what they're doing. And Mr. Shem should see a lot of nachas from us, from the entire family, and from the school. Honoring my parents and Mike and Leah, together with the dedication of the name for the school, the Beis Yaakov, in the name of my grandmother, I just feel it's so appropriate. All these things being brought together. Naming the school Shiraz Rachama 
is a beautiful, appropriate uh, thing to do for her neshama, for her Elias neshama, because it will perpetuate her name. It's that legacy, it's that, it's that idea that we're, we're here for a purpose, we're here for a reason, and there's no time to waste. She really personified the character traits that a Bisiak of Gro has to have. She was a Tznua in a school that was founded and started by Zaviona, who is a grandson of someone who really was just all about doing for others and doing it in the right Yiddish way. It's just very appropriate to have these three things come together. When something is three-ply, it does not easily rend. This is a three-ply schus, and all three things together will guarantee, will help, that the school should continue to be successful in their endeavors. Renaming of the school should be a schus for them and for our school to be able to carry on in Bobby's legacy, and it should be a schus for neshama, and we should see nachas from all our families and the school. Thank you.